Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners, uh, you can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net on a one-time basis. And uh, you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of The Man Called X. Uh, the original air date on this one is March the 7th of 1948, and the title is Passport to Danger. With two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And our Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. There was no warning, no presentiment of impending danger. The counterfeiting case was closed and Ken was packing in his hotel room in Bern, Switzerland, when the telephone started to ring. Hello. Hello. Hello, Ken. That's right. Who's there? Ken, this is Paul Desjardins. Paul? Paul! Must be three years since I've seen you. But I thought you were living in Luxembourg. I was, Ken, but I ran into Pagan Zellschmidt the other day, and he told me where you were. So I've come to Switzerland to talk with you. Pagan? In Luxembourg? What the... Oh, well, skip it. What's up, Paul? Ken, do the names Overbeck, Kopik, Nashtol mean anything to you? Are you kidding? They're some of the worst war criminals, international crooks, still at large. What about them? Suppose I tell you that all of them in war will soon be in the United States, free to come and go as they please. You sure about this, Paul? Positive, mon ami. You must act within 24 hours or you will never be able to stop them. Where are you now? At a small cafe called Le Coq d'Or. I called a... Then stay there. I'll be with you in 24 minutes. <laughs> Bonsoir, monsieur. Welcome to the Coq d'Or. Merci. I'm looking for monsieur de Jerry. Ah, mais oui, monsieur. He is in the private dining room beyond, through that door. Yes. Well. I hope I can take that as a compliment, Mr. Thurston. Yes, yes, you certainly can, Miss... Um... Sally Dennis. Oh. I'm a friend of Paul de Jerry's, too. He'll be here later, but he asked me to talk over this uh, business with you meanwhile. Yeah, I'd rather not hear. Oh? Why not? I'm allergic to dead bodies. What? Or do you think that foot sticking out of those draperies looks alive? What? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Well, He's dead? He's dead, all right. Poor... How about talking, Sally, and fast? No, no, I don't think so. Oh. Those things have broken up more beautiful friendships. A luger, isn't it? Yes. And if you don't mind, I'll be leaving. What happened to that lovely conversation we almost had? Suppose we have it some other time when there's no dead body cluttering the landscape. Unless, of course, the body happens to be yours, Mr. X. <laughs> I see. And uh, what did you do after she left, Ken? Nothing much, Chief. Checked the body, got the police, and put in this call to you in New York. What do you think of it? Well, it just doesn't make sense. Doesn't it? Chief. Chief, if there's one spot in this shaky world that looks mighty good to people right now, all kinds of people, it's the United States. Oh, yes, of course, Ken. We all know the reasons for that. 
Freedom to come and go as they please. Plenty of food, money. Right. And if there's anybody we don't want in the United States, it's troublemakers like Overbeck, Copy Gun Company. That's why I'm going to Luxembourg. Luxembourg? Paul worked in the government printing office there, where the passport and identification papers are made. And when I searched the body, I found all of Paul's papers. <laughs> so what? So this. The dead man in the cafe was not Paul de Géry. Thirst and welcome back to Luxembourg. Thanks. Any chance of my old room being available? Oh, for you, Monsieur Thurston, everything in this hotel is available. Good. I'll be back to take up on that as soon as I look up an old friend of mine. Don't bother looking. Here I am, Jimmy, on a spot. Hey, gone. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I figured you'd show up after I told Paul the Jerry where to find you, huh? <laughs> and now that you have arrived... What's your racket this time? You are now looking at Luxembourg representative of International and Worldwide Travelers Helper and Ticket Selling Agency. In other A words... travel bureau. Exactly. Mr. Thurston, do you feel run down, depressed and unhappy? Are you overworked and tired? Don't answer. What you need is a vacation. <laughs> and we have some very special tourist deals. All expenses paid. Uh, how many tickets do you want? Pagan, if you can arrange any... My, in my transportation from Luxembourg into the United States without passport or identification... I'll buy every ticket you got. See you around. Oh, sure, Mr. Thurston. I'll go to work on it right and... Um, hmm? Without passports? But, but... That's all right, Zell hmm? Schmidt. It can be done. Oh, that's different. I hear... Who are you? Sally Dennis. I was in that phone booth. I overheard your conversation. I'm interested in that trip, too. You are? Listen. When either you or Mr. Thurston finds out how to make it, I want you to let me know. If you get what I mean. Uh, could... <laughs> Could, could, could that be money you're holding? Just a little advance on those tickets to the United States. <laughs> you see, I think that if the three of us took that trip together, it might be very cozy. Don't you? Oui, monsieur? Oh, sorry. I thought Paul de Jerry lived here. Well, he does, monsieur, but he's not in just now. I am Antoinette de Langer, his fiancée. Could I help you? I think you can, mademoiselle. My name's Ken Thurston. <gasps> Monsieur I'm... Thurston. Oh, come in, please. Please come in. Thanks. So you are Ken Thurston. My darling Paul has spoken of you many times. I had hoped someday to meet you, but... but not at such a time as this. What, uh... What's the trouble? Something has happened to Paul. I know it. You know it, too. That is why you are here today. Is that not so? That's about it, Antoinette. What do you know about it? Very little, monsieur. Only that he has been missing for three days. There's been no word from him? Nothing, monsieur. And for some time I have suspected he was involved in something dangerous. I feel it somehow concerns his work at the government printing offices. Yeah. Did you ever talk about a man named Overbeck or Nastol or Kopig? The names are not familiar ones to me, monsieur. I don't even... Wait. Wait. It seems to me that Paul said something about... Yes. Yes, I am certain. Something might happen in the government offices this night, tonight. Let me check on that. No, oh, but, monsieur, that is impossible. The guards, the watchmen... You could not get in. Unless... What, Antoinette? Monsieur, the third window in the alleyway behind the building has a broken lock. The night watchman passes there at exactly 7.13 and does not return for eight minutes. How do you know about all this? It was while working in these offices that I met Paul. He used to get into the building that way while he was investigating this affair. All right, Antoinette. I'll let you know how I come out. Maybe I'll have good news for you. I do not expect it, monsieur, but I shall hope. Hello? This Antoinette. Listen carefully. Ken Thurston will be at the third window in the alleyway behind the printing building at 7.13 tonight. That is correct. We. Oui. And I am certain you know exactly what to do. Herr Overbeck. 
to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Night cloaks the ancient city of Luxembourg. In the dark shadows of the alleyway behind the government printing building, Ken checks his watch. It's ten minutes past seven. In just three more minutes, he hopes to learn how some of Europe's worst criminals gain a legal entry into the United States. Then, as he waits... You? Oh, for you? Oh, Mr. Thurston! Be gone. Oh, yeah, Oh, here you are, Mr. Thurston. What? What are you doing here? Why well, followed you from the hotel? I got it figured out how we can get into the United States without passports or papers. No time for that now. But it's so simple. Starting from Saigon in French in the China, you stow away aboard a freighter to Vladivostok. Then from then, you take a sampan to Formosa, where some Chinese junks are waiting. Pagan, that's the worst drivel I've ever heard. But, Mr. Thurston... Oh, shut up. Oh. The watchman should have made his rounds by now. Let's check this window. Huh? What window? No. Antoinette was right. Yes, yeah, she was. Stand right where you are, monsieur. The watchman. Relax, Pedro. It's all right, Paul. It's Ken Thurston. Ken Thurston? Ken, mon ami. How happy I am to see you. Paul, what are you doing here? The same thing as you are, mon ami. I came here to investigate. Look out! That car! Get down, both of you. Get down! Oh. I'm dead. I'm dead. They shot me in the alley. They didn't touch you, you idiot. Paul. Paul, are you hurt? I... I am all right, Ken. I... Mr. X, look. He's been hit. Yeah, yeah. Ken, listen to me. Identification papers, passports, visas. Stolen from the government. Huh? Overbeck and his men are using them to get into the United States. They can't get in on those alone, Paul. The quotas will stop that. How are they working it? One by one, they have left Luxembourg. Over back least tonight. Yeah? First stop, Lisbon. Lisbon? Where do they go from there? I, I don't know. Didn't learn. Wanted to tell you in Switzerland. Uh-huh. But over back, man found me. Cafe. I killed him. So that's how it was. Then you put your papers on him to make over back think you were dead. Then I was afraid to stay. I came back here to Luxembourg, hoping you would follow. I did it. Paul, where did you get this information? Who's behind all this? Is Antoinette in on it? Antoinette? My fiancée? Oh, sorry, Paul. What about Sally Dennis? Yes. Sally is... Sally is... Mr. X. Yes? He'll never learn what happened to those dirty crooks who killed him. Here you go. I'm going to find out for him. Starting right now, in Lisbon... Hello, Miss Dennis? Yes? This is Pagan Zeltschmidt calling. I got news for you. Oh? Has Ken Thurston learned how to get into the United States without a passport? We'll be leaving any minute. First stop, Lisbon. Lisbon? Are you sure? For my usual slight consideration, Miss Dennis, <laughs> I could be practically positive. Monsieur Thurston, wait. Before you board the plane. Antoinette, what are you doing here? I have just come from the government building, monsieur. I... I learned what happened there. Oh. Now I must take Paul's place. You will let me go with you, monsieur. Let me help you find those men. Please, monsieur. All right, Antoinette, climb aboard. Here is the official report, Senor Thurston. Yes, Miss Paper. Uh, during the past 60 days, 21 persons came here to Lisbon from Luxembourg. 19 of them, including one this very day, had passage booked through to Winnipeg, Canada. Winnipeg? See. Si. Sure, that ties in. The next lap on the trip. I beg your pardon, senor. Look, I want passage for three on the next plane to Canada. have moved so fast. We've come so far. 
And you have still told me nothing. Why have we come to this hotel in Winnipeg? It's as good as any, Antoinette. We might as well be comfortable before we close in on them. But close in on whom, Ken? Where and how? Suppose you go to your room and rest for a while. I'll give you all the answers later. Oh, but Ken, I... Very well. I know I can trust you, as Paul did. And I am tired. I will see you later, Ken. (laughs) Maybe she trusts you, but I don't. Luxembourg to Lisbon to Winnipeg, and not one ticket did you buy from me. You still haven't shown me how to get into the United States without papers, Pagan. But I'll give you one more chance. If Antoinette leaves the hotel, I want you to follow her. Mm-hmm. Let me know where she goes. Okay. Where I find you? I'll be up in my room talking to the chief long distance, or I'll be giving the third degree to a beautiful young lady over a quiet drink. What beautiful young lady? The one just checking in at the desk. Sally Dennis. You know, Sally, I'm almost beginning to believe that yarn of yours. It's the truth, Ken, so help me. Sally Dennis, syndicate columnist. And not too bad a one, if I say so myself. Yeah. How'd you latch onto this particular yarn? I recognized Overbeck in Luxembourg, and I smelled a hot story. So I tagged after him for a while. That's when I learned that Paul de Jerry was telling him, too. What about that uh, cafe scene you played so well in Switzerland? Well, I lost Overbeck one fine day, and I decided to follow Paul. I'd overheard his phone call to you, and I was waiting for him when you came in. That corpse you found made it look pretty bad for me, so... Hmm. And you've been on the trail ever since. That's right. Are you sorry? I don't know yet. Well, why make it tough for yourself, Ken? I'll cooperate. Believe me, Mr. Thurston, it's not worth it. Hey, go. Why I ever left my little travel agency to travel with you, I don't know. Ha! What a life. You know what that Antoinette cookie did? Sure. She left the hotel. That's right. And what for? <laughs> to go to a no-good deserted farm 20 miles outside of town, with nothing in the place but the icicles growing in the fields. That's all I wanted to know, Pagon. Thanks. Ken, would you mind explaining what you two were talking sure, about? Sure, Sally. This traveler's little helper is going to show us how aliens are smuggled into the United States. <laughs> There's the farm now, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, I see it. I thought you said those fields were empty. That air transport sitting out there looks pretty substantial to me. Think it was hanging in the barn, Ken? Must have been. Hey, look. Look, Mr. Rex. It's taken off. Yes. With Overbeck and 18 of his pals aboard. There she goes, Mr. Rex. Right over our heads. So that's how it's done. They get into Canada on the fake papers, and that plane drops them off in the States. That's right, Sally. They're off in the last lap. Well, let's see what Antoinette can tell us. Hey. Hey, look. Here she comes now from the barn. Oh, Ken. Ken, we were too late. They have gotten away. I saw that. I tried to stop them. Believe me, I tried, but it was no use. Now they are gone, flying into the United States. And the poor lad died for nothing. You can drop the act, Antoinette. What are you saying? You stole the passports and identification papers while you were working for the government in Luxembourg. Oh. The tip-off came when that car ambushed me in the alley. You were the only one who knew I was going there. Ken, Ken, you can't believe that. Why, why you even brought me here from Luxembourg yourself. Sure. It was the easiest way of keeping an eye on you until I could tie all this together. Oh, you're wrong, Ken. Paul would tell you that if he were still alive. Paul would now, tell listen, you... Now, listen, Antoinette. You've used him to cover you for the last time. When he died, he was lying to defend you. The only person in the world... He'd lie for. And he died because you couldn't see past those dollar signs in front of your eyes. How much did you make out of murder? Well, the plane is gone. You have no proof, so I do not mind telling you. Ten thousand dollars apiece. Not bad for a job well done. Well done. Look up there in the sky, Antoinette. Those are Canadian border patrol planes. Plenty more around, too. And twice as many on the American side of the border. Patrol planes? What are they doing here? Hey, that phone call you made to the chief, That's eh? right, Pagon. <laughs> that transport doesn't dare put down anywhere. Oh. And when Overbeck and the others start figuring how you double-crossed them, Antoinette, well, we'll have all the proof we need. Well, you will never live to see it. Let's you... have that gun. No, no, I will kill you first. 
I will. Mean... Uh, well, relax, Antoinette. Oh, so. Well, well, that's that. Yes, it is all over, isn't it, Ken? Yes. And you've got your story, Sally. But you know, it's not people trying to sneak across international borders and make the biggest story today. It's the people like Antoinette and Overbeck who don't know any borders, who don't care how many lines they cross or how many lives it costs, so long as it brings profit to them. When we get rid of them, we'll be a lot nearer to peace in this world. Our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. May I remind you again that America needs scrap metal in order to produce steel. Steel to make things you want and have been waiting for. To keep prosperity and employment at a high level. So this week, collect scrap metal around your home and turn it into your community scrap drive or to your local scrap dealer. Now, next week, our story has a kind of funny title. It's called The Pickled Chemist. But it's about a man who's not only deadly serious, but uh, very deadly. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return... As the man called X, good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I like that this one picked up where last week's left off with uh, Ken Thurston in Switzerland. Because it seems like typically he goes back home before the next mission. So this is a nice touch. I also appreciated the portrayal of how illegal entry uh, that's malicious or for the purpose of espionage work with them taking this route you know, through multiple uh, locations into Canada and then through that to the United States. Particularly since we tend to live in an era where we think that it's uh, illegal entry is just coming across, you know, one of the two borders. I did think that the explanation given to Ken, since he couldn't, since it wouldn't be proved in court, was probably a bit silly given that two other people were standing there as well because those two would be witnesses against her. Well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Brian, a longtime listener and supporter of the show, and a Patreon supporter since March of this year. Currently supporting us at the Master Detective level of $15 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Brian. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Mystery is My Hobby, and we'll be back next Wednesday with a Christmas episode of The Man Called X. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>